Welcome everybody to the seventh episode of the Untitled Podcast with myself, Snowmallcraft, and my co-host, Lawrence Orocha. What's up, dog? We back. We are back. So, uh, how's procrastinating homework, buddy? I don't procrastinate. Oh. I get things done in a timely fashion. Oh, that's what people That's what I prefer to say. Okay, it's fine. I procrastinate. So, did you go out and vote? <sighs> <laughs> Is that a no? That is a no. I don't want to get into the specifics. What happened? I thought you registered. I did register. One day you came home so happy, you're like, I registered to vote, man. It turns out I registered to vote in Elkhart County. Uh, we don't live in Elkhart County, uh, no, do we? No, we don't. We live in Monroe County. <laughs> what an idiot. So, yeah. So, Tuesday was election day. Or day. I don't know why they call it election day. Our polls closed at freaking six. But, yeah. However, it went out. I'm glad people went and, went and voted. Big midterm. A lot of people went out. More early votes. Like, early votes than people that voted entirely for the last midterm. So, that's pretty dope. So, take that as you want. I don't know why I even mentioned it. It just came to mind. So, let's jump into the sports. Why everyone's here. I, our opening thing. So, I do this in sections. People that don't know at home. So, I start with the NBA. And the top story, I think, is that the Lakers signed Tyson Chandler. What do you think about this signing, Roach? Um, honestly, I think it's a good pickup for the Lakers. You see the roster they tried building by adding yeah. just a bunch of veterans to those young guys. And I think Tyson Chandler just gives them an extra big they can play. Because yeah. right now, JaVale McGee's pretty much the only big getting minutes. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, um... JaVale McGee has, like, the best plus-minus on the team. Right. And they don't have another one of those guys, so they just needed to get someone else. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that James Jones apparently did LeBron a solid by getting rid of Tyson Chandler? Did you hear about that? Because he's the GM of the the Suns. Oh, really? Yeah, you didn't know? No. Yeah, he's the GM of the Suns. When did he become the GM of the Suns? It was, like, days before the season. Remember they fired their GM? Yeah, I didn't know he replaced him, though. Yeah. I don't know if he's, like, officially their GM, but he's the acting GM right now. So, James Jones was like, LeBron, Here's Tyson be a Chandler. big guy. <laughs> we don't want Tyson Chandler. You got him? Yeah, that's so apparently, you know how all those, like, um, buyouts happen, like, towards the end of the year? The reason this happened so early was apparently just because they wanted to deal with solid and buy him out. Because I think the Lakers right now, like on the waiver thing or whatever, like they are before, because their record's not that good, right? Now. Right. Yeah. So he didn't want to do it later when they couldn't get him. So yeah, Tyson Chandler, he looked pretty good. Uh, they showed a clip of him. I don't remember who he's guarding, but like he didn't move. So that's exactly the guy they need—a guy that can catch lobs. Yeah. And play defense like Javel. They just need another Javel McGee because. LeBron hasn't had a big guy like this since Tristan Thompson two or three years ago. And you saw he was begging for him to get paid. Yeah. So now it's JaVale McGee and Tyson Chandler on minimum deals. <laughs> like, I think he realized when he was a GM in Cleveland, you don't need to pay that guy mm-hmm. so much money. <laughs> right. Because they just, like, stop being good anyway. So then the next, top, the next thing I have, Jamal Murray's 48. What was your reaction to, maybe not in the 48, but Kyrie's reaction? (laughs) I just thought it was funny how mad he got. I mean, yeah, I know unwritten rule, end of the game, don't, you're up, don't shoot the shot. But he's right there at 50. Like. See, this isn't a game of 2K, bro. I personally don't have have a problem with him shooting that last shot. I did. But. But. If I'm Kyrie, don't let him score 48. Like, why are you gonna, just don't let him score at all. Why are you going to be mad that he tried scoring three more points when the game was out of hand when you let him score those 48 to get to that point? I don't know. I feel like, just everyone knows, man. Like, you didn't get 50. Sorry, dog. I just thought it was so funny. <laughs> He's like, like, they're asking for the ball. Right. Like, the, the officials, or not the officials, but the... Like the guys in suits, basically for the Nuggets, and he's like, "Oh, you want the ball?" And he just chucks it into the ground. <laughs> it was perfect, dude. That's exactly what I want. That's what I would have done if I was Kyrie. And that's such a baller thing. Like, 
Just untucked shirt. Kind of you just tucking it. I loved it. I was a big fan. You? Not so much. Not so uh, much. Honestly, like, I don't know. It, I didn't really have a problem with Kyrie th- chucking the ball like that either, but at the same time, I'm just like, don't get mad. He tried shooting it at the end of the game. I don't know. That's don't a let young him score board, the though. 50. Don't let him score the first 48. Like, even when Kyrie was like, drop, when he dropped like 55 or whatever, like, he did it within the game. You know what I mean? He didn't get he didn't give it garbage points, you know. Right, but he had already hit that fifty mark, like. Yeah, because he said he's he basically said be good enough to drop fifty within the game. <laughs> Don't have to put up the garbage shot. I am, dude. Trust me. He ba- It's two points. Trust me, dude. But it's just the act of. You. I mean, we've seen it. In be the good playoffs. enough. You're like be good enough. You're saying be good enough to put up fifty in the game. He was good enough to put up forty eight on Kyrie. Kyrie's getting mad because he tried. To put no, it. he was just he's trying to like he's trying to like big big boy everybody like oh look I'm getting fifty you know what I mean like, because he did know, but he didn't <laughs> he got forty eight there was still time left in the game he could have got it in the game no listen this is this is like taking a knee in football you take the knee you don't try to it's. Completely Throws different. The ball. It's the same thing. No, it's they the take, same principle. The reason they the take over. Run the, the clock reason out. they take the knee in football is run the clock to run the clock out. Okay. To end the game because you're winning. Yes. Yeah, end the game. But that's not how it is in basketball. It's exactly how it is in basketball. Not when you're okay. Bro, you've seen fights break out about this. <sighs> you've when seen you're fights. The game is out of hand. Yes, it's not going to be changed in one possession. But he's just trying to get that fifty. I know it's selfish. <laughs> I don't see it that way. When he's literally taking that shot to get fifty. If he was to, at forty-one, just chucking threes, the next, you know, like just. I don't but know. he wouldn't have. You know. Right, because he was. He's just trying to get fifty. I know he's being selfish. It's a. I don't see he's it. He's being. Right. You literally just explained selfishness. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's what you just explained. It's selfish. He shouldn't have done it. I don't think Roach thinks differently, but. I'm just saying I don't have a problem with him doing it. I do, but it's fine. It's whatever. Not a big deal. I'm not. T- I'm not saying I think he should have done it, but I don't really care that he did. But if you're so, if you're a professional basketball player, you're you lost. You're a professional. If I'm a you professional lost. basketball player and I give up 48 points to a guy, I'm like, man, this is why we lost. Not because he's shooting his three at the end. Of the no, game. I mean that's not why. He's, that's not his argument at all. It's just like this is we're. This is a brotherhood. We respect each other. We shouldn't, like, it's done. Just run the clock out. Right. I'm just saying, if he's going to get mad at something, be mad because he let it for you. He, he was, though. In the interview afterwards, he's like, he basically said what you're saying right now. He's like, I was just upset that he, he he's like, I don't even, I don't regret throwing the ball in the crowd. Just that, he's just like, that's just something you don't do. Like, I'd do it again. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't deserve that ball, basically, is what he said. Because he was like trying to up and up show like make a show out of it basically. Right. Like you got like you scored a bunch of points. You led your team to victory. That should be enough. That's basically what I was trying to say. Anyway, next topic: the Rockets' assistant coach Jeff Bezelik. I don't even know how you say this dude's name. Unretires. Why is this a big deal, Rich? Because the Rockets suck. <laughs> Honestly, yes, and he's basically their. He was deemed their defensive coordinator, right? And their defense, pretty bad. In the turd can right now. In the turd can. <laughs> Just be sure. In the turd can. <laughs> you holding a, holding a can. But like one of those like cheesy style like, you know what I mean? Just like smiling. I don't know why I'm saying why I'm doing face motions. People can't see me. But yeah, in the turd can. This is a big deal. Because Carmelo, not good on defense. James Harden, not good on defense. Chris Paul has been playing. James so, Harden kind of showed flashes last year that he could yeah, play but defense. It's like, though. Listen, it's like he's getting in passing lanes, basically. Like he's intercept, like through steals. At the end of the day, if he's one of the guys on the floor, you're trying to get him one on one. So that's, but he's not like a total liability like he was a few years ago, right? But he's still not good. It's like Steph Curry. Like he's gotten better, like steals and stuff like that. But so this is this is important for like the middle guys, which Carmelo Anthony should be one of those middle guys, like basically playing defense for the first time in his career. <laughs> but because he's playing like more of a four, I think he doesn't want to admit it. 
kind of like no one else does. Mm-hmm. But ever since he got to New York, dude, he's been playing four. Yeah. Which, I don't know. I just don't think Carmelo Anthony is a good player, period. Not anymore. Not in today's NBA. No. Like, once he got to New York, like, once the Heat thing ended, that's when that era of players Basketball ended. Ended. When, like, the Warriors were coming out. Right. Stuff like that. So, yeah, do you think this will help the Rockets' season? I mean, I think the Rockets will take anything they can take what they can get yeah. to try to salvage. Well, I mean, I'm not going to say salvage. still the beginning of the season. But yeah, they're only like four and six. To try to, like, turn this thing around as quick as possible. I think that's that's makes sense. Like, their defense was, you know, they obviously they lost a couple big wings that were pretty good defenders, like respected defenders in the league. But I think it's the first step to fixing that, if anything. Yeah. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna do something, this is a good first. Step. And I think they need to realize they're not gonna be as good as last year. Just like the dynamic of the team doesn't make right. sense. Right. Yeah. Like, what Obviously. is this team's identity? Last year they were later or Trey. We play defense. What is their identity this year? <laughs> I can't tell you. We try. Their to... identity this year is getting mad at Melo when he takes a mid range jumper. Dude, it looks like. Mike D'Antoni just wants to blow his brains out, dude. Mike D'Antoni was so did not want Melo there. <laughs> yeah, for real. And like, what are you doing, Watch, there, They're gonna trade Melo for Ariza. Melo's going to the Suns this year. What? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Because <laughs> they wanted to play pay Ariza that money, they would have done it already. But. I, I think I think Daryl Morris re- will realize though. Hey, I should have paid you this money. So you gonna... so take Carmelo. Sons. <laughs> Here you go. Become worse. I bet they take it. The son James Jones would be like, "Hey, we're trying to lose here." It's on a one year deal. Mm-hmm. He'll be off your books. I don't know why the Suns. I thought of the Suns. I thought of Aiton. and I thought of Luca. What are you thinking of Luca's season? Rookie of the year. He's looking like it, dude. Marvin Bagley, my prediction for rookie of the year, not doing anything. Big old Busto. It's, he's playing fifty. Bigger minutes, bust bro. than Lonzo. Come on, bigger bust than Lonzo. Let's I see. hate when you say things with just no facts. <laughs> you just say it just to make me mad. <laughs> he's playing fifteen minutes a game. What's he supposed to do? Play more than fifteen minutes a game. Oh, just play more, lol. Just play more. <laughs> Get out there. Your first round pick, bro. Yeah, if I were, I mean, if I found the Kings, I'm the Kings. Their record's pretty good right now. Yeah, surprisingly. Because De'Aaron Fox has been dogging. I've always liked De'Aaron Fox. Um, Ever since he dogged on Lonzo at Boston College. Yeah, you're so right, dude. When Lonzo was one of the best players in the country in college, he was, he was a bust already. That's why he got picked second, because like, bust, we want him. <laughs> Imagine how much better the Lakers would be with De'Aaron Fox right now. Just saying. Mm. Not much better. <laughs> because I think they're pretty good right now. Lakers are sitting at 4-6 and six as well. So, this the West is so tight. Like, these early games mean so much compared to, like, in the past. Yeah. I'm realizing this. Because getting behind, you got to dig because, yourself out yeah, of the you hole. Don't wanna, the last thing you want to do is get behind in the West. You don't want the Nuggets only losing one game so right. far. Yep. And the like, Lake Show. But, like, the the Nuggets are going to be consistent the whole year. That's mm-hmm. just how they are. Nug- the Nuggets might only get better. They're going to get Everyone better. slept on the Nuggets. Like, all these playoff predictions. Nuggets were, like, the first team out in all of them. What, I honestly didn't expect them to make... I expected them to be, like... Leap. I think I... I don't remember. Do I have predictions? Not in this one. I have so many... But really, when you think about it, they're just a young team... Only getting older, yeah. Like, like, the, like gaining last experience, year like good old. Was good the worst age. that this core will ever be. Yeah, that's how I'm looking at it. And like Tatum, basically, like last year is the worst he's ever going to be potentially. So they're only going to get better. And this is the Nuggets team without Michael Porter Jr. Yeah, but who knows if that dude will ever play basketball. <laughs> Just saying. Having a bad back at 19. Just adding just adding more fuel to the fire. But that's the thing. Like, that's why they took him. It's because 
they didn't need like they had all their pieces you know what i mean like they're only gonna get older we're only gonna extend these guys so let's take let's add someone who has a let's take a huge potential who has a huge ceiling yeah and like the risk is high but they're in a position where they can take a high risk like the the result of that risk isn't like the consequence isn't as big as say you're the bulls right because you still got paul Millsap. i thought the bulls were gonna take michael porter jr i was really surprised that they didn't actually but I like uh, Wendell. Wendell Carter. So yeah, a little rabbit trail there. Um, next news we have Cavs news again. Kyle Culver requested a trade in the summer. Hmm. Kind of surprised by that, you know. But I'm not surprised. I think Kyle Culver is probably the highest trade value, other than like Sexton or Love. Probably is the highest trade value of those of those bets they have. Yeah. Yeah. Would. Would you be surprised if, like, the Lakers call up no, the Cavs? Yes. Yeah, I'd be surprised too. But, I'd be like, surprised I wouldn't if they be surprised if a contender for... calls him up. No, because I think he's still valuable coming off the bench. For real. I'm trying to think of, One like... One of the most accurate three-point shooters in history of the league. I'm trying to think of who, like, needs a shooter. Like, a contender. Like, I'd say the Sixers, but Rockets. they have Redick. Huh? Rockets could add some more shooting. They could. Because that was a whole identity last year, and they don't have any shooting. But... The Who built this team? The, the Thunder? I'd trade Roberson for Korver. <laughs> Defense player of the year, stop. <laughs> I'd give like... But obviously, the winner of that trade would be like the Cavs. So oh, you'd, yeah. you'd, throw, you'd like throw in like a second. A second in Korver for Roberson. We should be jammed. I'd rather keep my defensive player of the year, but that's just... You'd have to keep your defensive player of the year, dude. I'm sure you... There's no minutes for him. Shout out, Zave. I'm just saying, there's no minutes for Roberson. Because why would I play Roberson when I have Turd Ferguson that can play defense and he's a better offensive player? Turd Ferguson. <laughs> That's his name, right? Yeah. Turd? <laughs> Anthony Turd. <laughs> shout out, Anthony Turd. Turd. Whoa, Ferguson. whoa, whoa. We're not to the shout outs yet. No, that was a collective shout out. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and Larry Drew got a deal finally. Good for him. Um, Secure that future. Yeah, because if you're going to take this bad team, bro, you need some, some You need a little bit of security. Because your reputation is going down the drain. Um, You know Nick Wright? Yep. He was talking about uh, how stupid like Dan Gilbert is, basically, because he is. He's probably the worst owner in the league. Yeah. Um, but he was like... He wanted the team back, you know, because think about it. LeBron, Ty Lue were like boys, right? And then, so you have Ty Lue left, and Dan Gilbert's like, mm, you're a decent coach. I, th- I actually think Ty Lue's a good coach. Ty Lue's a championship coach. I get that, but like, so is David Blatt, technically. <laughs> technically. And you can say the same thing about Ty Lue, like... <laughs> He had so much, like, he has LeBron. That's like, do you think Phil Jackson's a good coach? What's your opinion on this? I might be controversial here in a second. Well, I feel like you're going to say no. I'm going to say he's overrated. Because, because like, of who our we sample had, size. Who we had to coach with. Our sample size is Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Kobe Bryant, Shaq, Kobe Bryant, Pau Gasol. And then he fell off when he only had Kobe, you know what I mean? So I'm just thinking... And the triangle has been proven not to work at all. And Phil Jackson, the GM. It's not... Don't even get me started, bro. Stop. Don't even get me started. <laughs> he was ruining that team. He, he threatened to trade Porzingis. <laughs> we might, we're thinking about stopping Porzingis. What? <laughs> the unicorn. The unicorn. So, yeah. Phil Jackson, overrated. Heard it here first. I'm making a shirt of that, too. Phil Jackson, overrated, and it's going to just have a triangle. The triangle doesn't work. <laughs> and the, just triangle, like, not equal W. They don't equal wins. Because anyone else that's tried to implement it has failed miserably. Miserably. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Honestly, you could have them running, like, a flex. You could have them running, like, a third-grade offense the whole time, and Michael Jordan probably won't run titles. 
With Scotty Pippen, dude? Come on, it's over. Anyway. Skip Bayless, and I quote, Phil Jackson never proved to be a great coach. Just a great coach of the best players. No small trick, but he did have MJ, Shaq, Kobe, and Kobe, and Pow. That's facts, dude. I, I used to, Skip Bayless used to be like my favorite guy back in the day. Like when first take, like, first got big. Yeah. When it was him and Stephen A. Who was the host before Molly? I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, Molly talks too much, but that's yeah, she does. There. Um, yeah, I knew Skip, 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 Skip. And have you seen the city uniforms for Cleveland? I actually think they're pretty dope. I think they're dope, dude. Yeah, I, I might actually have to really snag like me a Colin them. Sexton one. <laughs> I'm getting a quarter, <laughs> so you can uh, sell it. Yeah, at less than half value. <laughs> I don't know, dude. If you had to, okay, if you had to get a jersey of somebody on the Cavs, who'd you get? Osman. I mean, dude, that's so true. I totally forgot. That's, Jetty. I need to get. I need to get a Jetty. Jetty Osman. The last Jetty. That's so true. I didn't even think of him. Yeah. They're so much better than those stupid grays they had last year. The land. Uh, those were so disgusting. I, whenever this I think of those, this looks so nice. I know they look slick. Have you? Did you see like the like Goodyear ones that like? They weren't gonna wear, but it was like just for a sponsor. No, I don't think so. They look pretty dope. I was like, mm, those are cool. Looks like something like the Pacers. Or I'd get a Nance Jr. Nah, bro. Because like Nance is synonymous with, with the, Cavs. the Cavs. Does he have Jr. on his jersey or is yeah, it just Nance? Nance Jr. But I'd still like, I'd still get a Nance Jr. jersey. I'd get a LeBron jersey. Why not? Or Jordan Clarkson. Jordan Clarkson? Are you joking? Actually. He lost them, like, two of those games in the final. His plus-minus was, like, minus 19. <laughs> <laughs> he's only out... Dude, okay, that's not true. I think he's, like, minus 9. But it was either game 2 or 3, and he was out there, dude. He turned the ball over, I swear to the Lord above, 30 times. And it just took bad mid-range shots the whole time and missed them all. And they, they were... I think they were up, like, 4, and then they ended up, like, down. Yeah. I'm just like get this dude out i search cleveland city uniforms and i keep seeing these ugly gray the abominations land. whenever i think of those i think of 2k last year and the first thing i did was play with isaiah thomas i'm like dude this is when everyone was like and i just see this and i'm like dude this is nice like the drake meme where he's like like shutting the other one and he's <laughs> yeah. smiling the yeah, other yeah. One. perfect so and whenever i think of those land jerseys from last year i think of the beginning of the year when I'm like, man, I think the Cavs won this trade. <laughs> I think they robbed the Celtics. Wow, hindsight's 2020, dude. Hindsight's 20. I can't like it makes me mad thinking that at one point I thought the Cavs won that trade. The Cavs got better. I was like, man, the Cavs. They when lost I saw, Kyrie, but they got deep. When I saw that, there's like a picture on Instagram of like the Cavs like potential roster for the start of the season and I had like Biggie Wade, Derrick Rose. <laughs> this roster in twenty eleven would have been insane. <laughs> uh, I totally forgot D Wade was on that team. Yeah. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas, D Wade, Derrick Rose, LeBron, Kevin Love, Tristan Thompson, Kyle Corver, all these dudes are like thirty six years old or like <laughs> older. <laughs> Dang, this is this is a the Toon Squad. <laughs> The Monstars are about to play. I for, Dude, that just makes you feel so stupid. D-Wade probably could have worked on that team, I think, long-term. But they just got rid of him because of the locker room. Like, because him and... Apparently him and uh, LeBron were, like, clicky. Right. Like, LeBron would talk ish about everyone else to D-Wade, his boy. Mm -hmm. But D-Wade's still having a good, good moment with him. I think he should have retired after last year, D-Wade. Ended off on that like run that he had in the playoffs. It's right here: Isaiah Thomas, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Kevin Love, Tristan Thompson, Derrick Rose, Jared Smith, Kyle Korver, Jay Crowder, Channing Fry. <laughs> Channing Fry. Yeah. Little do they know about the next Chet, the last Chet he did. Potential lineup come playoff time. That that was such a huge tweet. Yeah, I remember that. It was like putting the Warriors lineup against them, and they're like, "Oh man, dude, this is a deep team." Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> MVP candidate last year. Though, do, do they know he has the hip of a 60-year-old? 
Rip. Rip? I forgot the Cavs picked up Andrew Bogut. Oh, yeah, and he tore his he, ACL. The first game. I remember that, because I'm like, dude, they needed, like, Tristan Thompson, like, he was even, he, people even knew he was declining, like, then, because he had a bad finals. Yeah. And they were like, dude, Andrew Bogut, solid. Rip, literal rip. How many former first-round picks do they have? Bogut? Just Bogut, Rose, and LeBron. No, not as many as I thought. Yeah. But still. Speaking of Derrick Rose, he dropped 31 last night. And he had his, the most threes he's ever had in his career, right? He looked good, dude. I'm telling you, if he, like, just plays a little, if he plays, like, below this, like, not, like, D Rose of not playing at all, but if he contributes something like this, dude, the Wolves needed a point guard because Jeff Teague is buns. I'm telling you, dude, he's buns. Jeff Teague is buns. Make like that a shirt, dude. Out. I don't care. We Jeff need merch. Teague is buns. We need merch, dude. He is buns. Like, he's a solid starting point guard, okay? But he's not, like, anything crazy. People talk about Jeff Teague, like, he was. He's the greatest thing that the Pacers ever had. Like, he's fine. Like, he's okay. He had that one really good year with Atlanta, but... Yeah, he had one good year where the only reason anyone knew about him was because LeBron destroyed him in the playoffs. Like, same thing with Schroeder. Like, he had, like, one good game against LeBron in the playoffs. One good game. And then, Bismack Biombo. Like, all these people making names for themselves off LeBron. Against LeBron, yeah. Like, don't turn out to be anything. Like Bismack, like welcome back, Bismack Biombo. Charlotte had like a big thing. About if you want to make, if you want to make bank, just play one good game against LeBron. That's facts, though. That's facts. Like even, um, like uh, Rodney Hood, he has one good game in the finals, and people are freaking out about him. Yeah. Although I do think Rodney Hood is good. I. <laughs> but Jordan Clarkson. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. So, more NBA news. The All-Star Game draft will be televised. Should have been last year. Should have been last year. And LeBron, being LeBron, thinking he's so right, and he's so in touch with everybody, re- leaked the picks, <laughs> which is so stupid. Is Okay, this could sound bad. Is LeBron kind of annoying you? You're thinking. I don't think so. I think he's kind of annoying me, bro. And I'm a big LeBron guy. Right. But he's kind of annoying me. Like, I get it. He's an active. Like, his activism, that's not even bothering me. It's just thinking, like, he's so, like, in touch with his brand. You know what I mean? Like, he makes a show out of everything. Like, talking to reporters. Like, he's being short with some people. And then he, like, makes this big statement. Like, I get it, dude. You've been in the spotlight since you were 16, and you dealt with it great. I don't care anymore. Like, at the end of the day, just, like, don't shut up and dribble, obviously. But, like, you're declining as a basketball player, like, compared to the league. He's not the best player in the league. I just just said it. As of right now. Right now, he's not the best player. You're watching regular season LeBron. I don't care if he's on. I'm watching Lakers. LeBron try to win an MVP. LeBron, that's what I'm watching. That's the same LeBron we were watching last year. I'm not saying he's not great, dude. I'm, and his best, he's the best player in the world, best player ever. But I don't think he's like as good as he thinks he is. Like, okay, he's the best player in the world. That's clear. But he's too like bought into himself. You know what I mean? That it hinders his play. You know what I mean? he's like. When he plays, he thinks, I'm LeBron. You know what I mean? But like Giannis, when he plays, he thinks... I need to be better than LeBron. I need to be... Le- I'm not even better than LeBron. I just need to be better. You know? And I feel like LeBron's like in a place where he's like, I'm LeBron. Screw it. And you kind of saw it last year in the playoffs. He's like, screw it, I'm LeBron. I'm just going to take it. You know what I mean? Like somehow he had a quiet 50 points last year yeah. in the finals. Right. Or maybe I'm just taking LeBron for granted and I'm an idiot. You know what I mean? Maybe. Exactly. I mean, 15 years of LeBron's a lot. I know. It is a lot to take in. And seven straight years of the finals of watching him play in June. 
That's crazy. Dude. You brought up Giannis, and I just want to hear your take on these Buck City uniforms. I haven't seen them at all. Sorry, that was right in the mic. Don't they're, know oh, they're, they're Mecca inspired, right? Yeah. I didn't actually see the headline of this. But, I mean, just still, like, overall, I don't think it, it's a good What's, look. Why are they Mecca inspired? Is Milwaukee, like, do they have a high Muslim population? <laughs> Maybe. Let me see if I can find anything on it. Well, if they do, they didn't go out and vote. That's all I know. Rose is doing research. Don't worry. Your feed did not cut out. Just... It says, inspired by the bold colors of the renowned Mecca era that represented Milwaukee to the world and defined a generation of success. And what success? They don't know what that is entails. That, is that around like when they won the title? Like mm. Kareem? Lou Alcindor? Let's see. Oscar Robinson? Yeah. Yeah. I would, yeah, I would think so. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Dude, think about it. Oscar Robertson and Kareem being on the same team. That's wild. That's wild. Have you have you've watched the Lakers Celtics thirty for thirty, right? Yeah. The Kareem part is pretty interesting. How he like didn't want to be the superstar, like he didn't want to be the new Wilt. Mm-hmm. He just like wanted to play basketball, make money, and chill, smoke weed. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it's so fun. Like, he gets old so fast. <laughs> like, his hair is big, and the next thing you know, he's old. It's gone. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I want to talk about Zion Williamson. What is your opinion on Zion Williamson? This dude's a freak. He's a freak. Okay. So, Steve Kerr, when asked what he thought about Zion Williamson, he's like, he was like brought up LeBron. I'm just like... I'm giving him a side look. Like, I don't Come think I've on, seen bro. him shoot a jumper. <laughs> right. Like, Everything you see from him is like a dunk. Yeah. Something up by the basket. And listen, Zion Williamson's good. But I think he's overrated. I think he's like Blake Griffin territory right now. Because at the time, Blake Griffin, literally all he could do is jump and people were talking about like him being amazing. Mm-hmm. And let's not forget, when Blake Griffin came to the league, he only dunked, and he wasn't very good. And let's not forget what Blake Griffin is now. Trash. Dude, shut up. So then Blake Griffin, I'll never forget, Charles Barkley was like, if this dude learns how to play basketball, that's what this literally said. <laughs> if he learns how to play basketball, he'll be a really good player. And next thing you know, we see like Blake in the Western Conference like semis, like backing people down and like just being a post-technician. And it's just... I, Blake Griffin's of, like involvement as a player is probably one of my favorite ever. Because at first he only does his dunk, and then he gets hurt a little bit, and then he like, it's a post scorer. That's it. And then he gets traded. And then he gets traded to the best organization in the world. And then he's still. Tra- Dude, I can, I don't know why. What is your beef, with Blake? <laughs> I don't know why you say. Fight this. me, Blake. Blake would hit you with a one-two combo, and you'd be dropped. I don't know about that, Chief. <laughs> Stop. He's probably one of the best athletes in the league still. I did like Blake though. I had like one of those uh, jersey shirts of him in like sixth grade. Love that thing. I, dude, big Blake guy. Always been a big Blake guy. Never been a big Blake guy. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I'll tell you who I am a big guy though of Giannis. Giannis, I'm a huge humble. Giannis guy. Yeah, I'm a big Giannis guy, too. I like Giannis. Looking like him or Kawhi is going to win MVP. If I, like, way too early MVPs, it comes down to Kawhi or Giannis. What do you think? Or Steph. Steph's probably in there. Declare your way too early MVP right now. We're, we're 10-ish games in. Well. For some teams. Right. Some teams way more. I'd probably say Giannis, because looking at the Bucks' record right now, they're actually beating the Warriors by about 20 points. 30 points. So, I'd say Giannis. I'm going Kawhi. Just based on team success. I think he's putting up better numbers than Kawhi. So. Yeah, but I think it's just his impact. Like, 
Coach of the Kawhi Year. Kawhi is showing he wants to be there. Nick coach Nurse, of the year. Coach of the Year. <laughs> no, Budenholzer, definitely Coach oh, of the Year. Oh, for sure. He has it locked in. Already. It's already locked. It's his to lose, yeah. honestly. Bud, oh my goodness. A year off, dude. He gets the best player. One of the best players in the world. Top. I almost slipped it, bro. I almost dropped my best player in the world. I almost slipped it. I don't know, dude. Anyway. First, first four games of the season, I would have said Anthony Davis, but they haven't. They finally won a game. They dropped like six in a row, and then they finally won. The Pelicans? I, he's going to stay in New Orleans, bro. The more, how he's talking, like, I'm, I just want, I want DeMarcus Cousins to come back. Like, I want to try to get DeMarcus Cousins next year. You already think about next year, bro? The Thunder started the season off 0-3, slowly creeping men 7-4 and 4 right now. Dude, I, why is AD okay with wasting his prime years? You know what I mean? It's crazy to say we're saying it's his prime years. He, the dude's not even twenty six. He's not even in his prime years. What, what, what do you think prime is like? Like twenty seven to thirty. Scary. He's fringe prime. Fringe prime. Oh my god. Like. It's like so. That's like a boss. Fringe prime. <laughs> I love AD, dude. Someone had an AD jersey in one of my classes the other day, and I was like. That's dope. Like the red ones they have. I actually don't like the Pelicans jerseys, but I, that's cool. Um, oh, let's keep talking about Zion, okay? Yep. Then, the abomination that is this statement. Paul Pierce said on NBA Countdown, he's like, did you guys see that Duke game? And I was like, yeah, it's crazy. And then Michelle Wheels like, said something. And then he said, they could beat Cleveland right now. What do you think about that statement? It's probably true. Dude, stop. Do you actually believe that or are you just saying that to me? Uh, I think I'm just saying it. Like, that's so stupid. When people like Alabama could be a professional team, no, they can't, dude. They're grown men. They might be able to beat the Raiders. I'm not going to. I'm not going to, like, shoot that. I don't know about. Dude, they're still professional. Like, they're still professional. They're still a group of terrible professional But think about it, bro. They're still, like,. that entire, a majority of the Alabama team is not going to be good enough for the NFL. The majority of the Alabama team is good enough for the NFL. A majority. Yes. Over 50% of that Alabama team. All their starters, yes. Over 50%. The players who play, yes. Over the 50%. The players who play, the players who play, yes. The, all of them are good enough for the NFL. No. I'm all the saying, players that play yes. are good enough for the NFL. Yes. In some form, either bench roll, like backup, or starting. Yes. Okay, but they're not. This is what they're I'm not saying. all starters in the NFL, obviously. This is what I'm saying. They're not all good enough than established NFL players like that are in the NFL right now. And that's just because the players that are in the NFL now are older and better players because <laughs> they're in the NFL. But they're also older. <laughs> Okay. They're not so they're give, not forty five. Give these Alabama players a couple years and they can Okay, be but right. playing them right now. Yes. They play right now. Yes. They don't get a couple years. Okay, whatever. They play right they play next week. Okay. Raiders Alabama. I'm taking, You're taking Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> Dude, that blows my mind. Yes. Life. Nick Saban's a better coach too. We're on the anti John Green hype train over here. We're seeing how big of an impact coaching has on a game. But with, I just there's with levels Billy to this. and Belichick. There's levels to this, bro. There's levels to skill. And Alabama would not be the Raiders. I can't believe we're talking. There's about levels to this. this. Okay, I DC. Know. Well, okay, yes, too. We <laughs> saw there's levels to that. We'll talk about that later. That's the same thing. That is the exact same thing that would happen. So you're basically saying Alabama's Derek Lewis and the Raiders. That's exactly what I'm DC. saying. No, well, no. The Raiders would be like steep I, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, this better comparison. This it's like okay, great comparison actually. Brock Lesnar is an NCAA champion. Then he faces a black belt jujitsu, <laughs> Frank Meter, and. He heel hooks him within two minutes. Great talent, Brock Lesnar is. What happened when he gave Brock Lesnar two years? He beat down Frank Mir. 
<laughs> so I'm, I'm not saying, like, just right now, if they played next week. I still think Alabama could win. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's ignorant. That's I'm just not, straight up ignorant. not being ignorant. This team's insane. Okay, but that's still a college football team. They're all 20. I'll take a 20-year-old over some 36-year-old grandpa who has just arthritis the, in his knees. Just the, like, sad, just the like, experience alone, they win. Just the experience, I think. They've been through their prime. They know all the little, they know the tricks. Yeah, they've been through their prime. They can barely walk. That's just so silly to say <laughs> that they can barely. That's just walk. what that team looks like. That team's broken. <coughs> anyway, the Duke cannot beat Cleveland. That's stupid. Anyway, Kevin Love would have a heyday. I know. <laughs> he would make Zion look like a kid. <laughs> You just back them down the whole time. You in basketball, fadeaways. okay, yes. In basketball, football is more of a team sport. In but today's that's what NBA, I'm basketball. I think I think basketball it could be easier for a college team to be a professional team. I think it'd be harder. I don't know because I'm thinking of like I could just I the, could see one player taking over a game. That's what I'm saying. Like one person could take over. That like basketball is just like swing spurts and stuff like that. Like football obviously has momentum too, but at the end of the day. There's guys in the trenches. There's, like, the linemen. Like, I don't know. I feel like... At the end of the day, the better team in football doesn't always win. We saw it this past weekend. Obviously. Packers-Patriots. Dude, shut <laughs> up, dude. What are the Packers? 3-4-1? It's just so hard to comprehend. All right, we're not talking football. Yeah, we're not talking football. Well, this is basically the end of basketball. Right. Paul Pierce says they can beat Cavs. Wrong. If they played... A hundred times, the Cavs win 97 of those. <laughs> I could count, like, if I could bet on this game, Duke versus Cleveland, I'd bet on them every time. I don't even think Cleveland's the worst team in the NBA right now. I don't know. Like, the Wizards have to be. Probably. The Wizards I mean, are pretty terrible. They're just so dysfunctional. Yeah, it's because John Wall is such a baby. That's because Scott Brooks is a bad coach. <laughs> I don't wouldn't say he's a bad coach. He's not the coach for that team. If only the Wizards needed a coach that has dealt with two superstars like that are really good, and like deal with them. Oh wait, that's Scott Brooks, and he can't do it. He couldn't do it in Oklahoma City. He can't do it with lesser stars in Washington. <laughs> so stupid, dude. I'm glad Dwight Howard's butt is better though. I'm happy yeah. about that. I'm glad Dwight Howard looking like KD. <laughs> So stupid. Paul Pierce is stupid. I hate Paul Pierce. I hate Paul Pierce on Countdown. I ain't gonna lie. He's my least favorite. It goes. All right, if I have to rank Countdown, one Jalen, two Beetle, three Chauncey. Jalen's definitely number one. Definitely. I love watching Jalen on um, Get Up too. He does so much TV, dude. And then he has that podcast that he does. Jalen. What a grinder. It's probably. I mean, it helps that his right. girlfriend. Just working as much, no, nah, probably not as much as him, but working a lot. Did you see? Oh, I'll have to show it to you later. There's a a clip where Stephen A. like they're talking actually about that Kyrie situation. Like, does he with, tell Molly to shut up with Jamal Murray? Blah blah blah. And he's like said something about. I watched the Get Up segment first. Jalen Rose is talking about this like that, and then it comes back on him first take. He's like, I was just on set with, or I'm just on Get Up with Jalen. And he's like, first of all, Jalen Rose has, like, he's just joking around, but who's the one who let up 81 to Kobe? And Molly's <laughs> like, do we really have to bring that up? Like, I think it's stupid when people bring that up, but I like, didn't guard him the whole game. It was, it was hilarious. <laughs> I think Jalen, not the best NBA it. player, but I love Jalen Rose, though. He did a podcast with Bill Simmons, like, obviously the podcast with Bill Skimmons, they're like, Skimmons? Skimmons. <laughs> Bill Simmons, because they're boys, but... That was really good. He talked. He talked about like NBA life, basically. Yeah. So yeah. Um. All right. Let's move on to the NFL. Fantasy. Steph Curry injured. Really? Fantasy. I lost to you again. Not surprising. Well, not surprising because Saquon Barkley, bye. Odell Beckham Jr. Bye. Sony Michelle out. And that's about it. That's all I got for you. I still put um, up. I put up a pretty good number for my top two 
skill guys. I took out. sole possession of first place in both Flanco and Boys of Jewel. You did. Well, I think I got you in Boys of Jewel this week. Uh, I think so, because I haven't even looked at my team. Well, so I haven't looked either, but I just think I have you. I, need, I, I was informed I had Devin Funches in my starting line. Dude, Devin Funches good for a touchdown every week. I know. That's what I heard. It. You literally said that. I bro. literally didn't say that. What makes me mad is you didn't say it on the pod, so it's not recorded, dude. What oh makes me mad gosh. is that I didn't say that to begin with. You literally said that when you were talking about your I roster s- last Devontae week. Devontae Adams like, good for a no, touchdown every week. You, that's now you said that like. Seven weeks ago about Devontae Adams. You said it this past week about Devin Funches when you're talking about... I didn't say every week. I said he'd be good for a Dude. touchdown against Tampa Bay, and he obviously wasn't. Yeah, because he's not good. <laughs> he was a good college player, though. A great college player. For the best university. Michigan. I mean, honestly, I didn't have anyone else to start, so A.J. Green's out. Yeah. So, so I'm kind of stuck with that. You dropped... Uh, TJ Boyd. And I picked him up because I, I could have started Tyree Kill and then moved Leonard Fournette back into my starting lineup. Yeah, you could have done that actually. Or uh, even yelled in if you wanted to. Right. At one point, last I think it was last year or two years ago or something like that, I had I was playing Gronk in my flex. That's how much that's how many points he's putting up. Like I just put him in my flex because I'm an idiot and didn't put him in tight end. Mm-hmm. But idiot. No, I had a good tight end, too. I might have had Kelsey and Gronk. That's kind of wild. Man, I had Funches and Goat status, too. Really? Freaking buns. Yeah, that's a rip. Um, so, I'm probably going to lose to your brother ne- next week. Because he had Kish- Christian McCaffrey and, uh, what's his name? Oh, Juju. Smith-Schuster. Yeah. 31 for McCaffrey and then 21 for Juju. That's a rough way to start. I'm 53 in the hole already. Because he has he has a point for being home too. Never forget when he was trying to trade me McCaffrey for I think Camara. It was I think it was uh, I don't remember, but it was like I wanted Rogers too. Yeah. I was like I'll give you Breeze, Breezing Camara for I think it was Rogers and I forget what other running back he had. Yeah, David Johnson was it him? It might have been. You weren't that stupid, bro. You weren't going to do Breeze I, and Kamara straight up for Rodgers? Maybe it wasn't Breeze then. I don't, th- I don't think you put Kamara on the table. I feel like I'm remembering this. and. No, I think I did Breeze and Gordon. Dude, you have Fournette and Gordon. And... No, I have Kamara and Gordon. and It was in, in Flanco. I have Kamara and Gordon. You have Fournette, too. I have Fournette and uh, Boyd to Jewel. I have Gurley, Ingram, Fournette. Oh, yeah, because uh, Drew has Fournette. Because right. the team is the Fournette, the Fournette Cation, Cation. And he's only played like two games. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Fantasy, not looking good right now. Looking and pretty boys good for me. Jewel. But I just got to make the playoffs. That's all I'm thinking about right now. Yep, just got to get in. Just got to get in. I, I know I can beat Schmill. I know I can beat Nate down the stretch, I think. Because I think my guys will put in more on down the stretch. Yeah. And I think in Flanko, I have a shot as long as I don't play you first round. Because if you have all your all those big guys in Week 17, mm-hmm. that could be looking wrong. Because that's what happened to me last year. Was I had Kamara, Fournette, and somebody else. And they all they didn't play Week 17. You're right, because their spots were locked pretty yeah. much. So, I was like... I can't. That's why I lost the championship. Jimmy G was putting up numbers, though. That was good. Jimmy Jesus, rip. I, w- I kind of want to see... Can you see past teams that you've had? I don't think so. Because that team was kind of stacked, and I just want to see what it was. I don't think so. Because I had Jimmy G when he was putting up those numbers. Um, oh, dang. I had Kamara, Fournette. I think Fournette was in my flex. I had, oh, I had Zeke. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all coming back to me. I had Zeke, Kamara, Fournette. Fournette was in my flex. And then... You picked up Kamara off waivers, didn't you? Yeah, I picked up Fournette. No, I drafted Fournette. Because I was like, dude, I think he's going to be a dog. I picked him pretty high, too. Okay. Anyway, I don't know why we're talking about last year's fantasy. (laughs) So, biggest news of the week. Like, non-result-wise. Dez to the Saints. 
What do you think about Dez to the Saints? Love this move. I don't know why Dez Bryant wasn't on a roster. I don't know either. At this point in the season, and just adding him to the Saints with the most accurate passer probably in the history of the NFL. One of. Accuracy. We're talking about accuracy. I know, but there's been a lot of accurate quarterbacks. One of the most accurate passers in NFL history. And one of the reasons that. that his accuracy like, stats are so high is because he throws little dink passes Let's stop. All the time. Let's stop. You can look into it all you want. I'm just saying, like... The dude's at 77% this year. And the reason, like, his passing yard stats are Let's so stop. high so they don't run the ball. But, Let's stop. And they're in a, he plays in a dome at home all the time. Playing with a top 10 fine. quarterback of all time. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. He's I can't rank 10, top ten. Quarterback Playing with the right top now. ten quarterback of all time, better than anything you ever had in Dallas. Way better than Dak. I think. I don't think Dez's problems were because of Dez. I think they were because of Dak. Well, yeah, it's because like it's just like whenever you have a new quarterback, they have different targets. Well, and because Dak can't throw the ball, but Dak was pretty good this rookie year. That kind of hurts. I don't. I can't remember Dak just like playing so bad in his rookie year. Now I think it's just like he wasn't. He wasn't. He just didn't turn the ball over. He didn't play out of his mind or anything like that. He was just he took care of the ball. That was kind of what separate or made him stand out, I guess. Yeah. But anyways, Michael Thomas on one side, Des Bryant on the other. You got to double team someone. You're not going to double team Des. If you're going to double-team someone, you're double-teaming Michael Thomas. And if you don't, he's going to torch you for 200 yards. And they still have that uh, Tyron Smith dude, right? What's his name? Not Tyron Smith. Smith something. Something Smith. I know yeah, you're talking about. Good. I can't think of his name. He's quick. But then you also got Kamara, who's a backfield threat, who can line up as a receiver. Dog. And you got Ingram. So you got have Kamara out wide. Still have Ingram back there. You got to worry about the run. Like, yeah, if this could, offense is loaded. Yeah, if you could pick between Kamara and Gurley, who would you pick? Gurley. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I he's more of a workhorse back. Yeah, you can give him the ball more. The Saints have just always been good with that dual, like, two running backs. Yeah. Well, they have Pierre Thomas and Reggie Bush. Yep. They've been doing it for years, bro. Doing it for years, they know how to work with two backs. The Bruiser and the Finesse. Thunder and Lightning. Yeah. They kind of, like, you remember that time in the NFL you needed two running backs? Yeah. It's still kind of a thing. But like it's not. Every I think the teams. Team had two I feel backs. like the teams that utilize two backs the best are usually some of the better teams. Like yeah. you look at the Patriots, they they use Cordell Patterson for their main like backs. they just find someone to throw in there. Yeah, but the, they have so many good. They have so many decent backs. The Falcons were pretty good for a while when they had yeah, their Coleman. both of their backs healthy. Yeah, Freeman, and even like. The Broncos, they had one, I think they have one of the best, like, one, two, like, Royce Freeman and Philip Lindsay. And Philip Lindsay. When they play, like. And they're both rookies. And Royce Freeman's, but Royce Freeman's hurt, but I really like Philip Lindsay, dog. I like how he, like, just, like, they, he's, he's the workhorse back, basically. I really like Aaron Jones, dog. Still averaging, like, six yards a carry. I don't know why he's not getting the ball more. Because he fumbled. If I'm being honest. <laughs> That's why <clears> they <throat> took him out. One fumble and. Th- Two seasons. Yeah, I mean that's why he, that's why he stopped playing <laughs> last week because he fumbled. For you. Anyway, um, so the Saints Rams last week. Were you shocked at the blowout? Maybe not the result, but the blowout. It wasn't a blowout. I mean, they put up a lot of points, and right. the Rams don't give up a lot of points. I wasn't really shocked. Because, like I said, I was expecting it to be a high-scoring game. Two of the best offenses in the league. Probably the top two. top Two of the top three offenses in the league with Kansas City. Yeah. So, I wasn't expecting it to be low-scoring or anything like that. I knew this was going to be a shootout. And I did Especially expect the Saints to win. So, it wasn't that surprising to me. What was surprising was seeing the Saints go up. 35-14 and a half, and just seeing how fast the Rams closed that gap to tie it. That was kind of scary, because I was like, dude, okay, the Saints put them away in the first half, but then the Rams just came storming back in the third. And I was like, wow. Potential uh, this Rams team. game. <laughs> They're playing for the whole... Like I, I, told, I said before the podcast, the Rams are going to play out this season. Like, we were thinking earlier, like, Oh, it might not be good to have Rams players in fantasy because right. they might rest they might, like last year. Yeah, but now that they lost to the Saints, if they're playing for the one, if seed. those, 
If they're tight, they're playing for the one seed, yeah. Dude, out of nowhere, the Saints are 7 and 1. <laughs> like, I didn't even think I about know, it. they lost that first game to the Bucks, and everyone's like, what's wrong with the Saints? And now. And their defense isn't that good. Like, I mean, their defense, their defense terrible, was terrible that first game. But they, they still let up a lot of points. It's yeah. kind of, that whole division kind of lets up a lot of points, except for the Panthers, I'd say. Even though they just got spanked today. So that's a bad example because of what just happened. Mm-hmm. But usually they don't give up a lot of points. Yeah. So that's is that the is that your favorite division to like not I mean, obviously NFC North will probably be like your favorite. But do you like just watching out of all the other divisions, do you like just watching the high scoring, like big games at the NFC South has? I love it. That's my sec it's probably my favorite division, honestly. Yeah, honestly, I don't care for any of the AFC divisions. No, not really. Maybe the North back in the day. Eh, those defensive battles. But, yeah, I'd say the South is probably one of the better divisions in the league to watch. Just yeah. Yeah. beating up on each other all the time. That's crazy. Three went to the playoffs last year? Yeah. That's nuts. That's so cool. Saints, Falcons, and Panthers. So, uh, what division what's winner. Falcons record? Right now? Yeah. Um, three and four or three and five or something like that. Oh, four and four. So five hundred. Speaking of the Falcons, I think I'm gonna start Duke, John- Duke Johnson against them because they have the worst like passing defense in the league. And yeah. That's all he does is catch passes. Because they don't have any defenders left on their team. Like their defense is getting torn to shreds with injuries. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, do you think they're going to make the playoffs, the Falcons? No. I don't think so either. They're, they're already at, be weird. They're already at four losses, and they've only played half of their division games. Yikes. So. They got to play the Saints again, right? That's an L. Panthers? Oh, I'm know. looking up at the schedule real fast. The Falcons not in the playoffs is going to be weird. They're at New Orleans, at Carolina, at Tampa Bay. But the thing about at New Orleans, like, again, no. I believe playing in a dome. Matt Ryan's used to a dome. You know what I mean? Like, it's not But it's, it's not like Brett Favre going to play in a dome in an NFC Championship <sighs> game where Drew Brees is in his element. You know what I mean? A dome's a dome. <laughs> yeah, but it's not your fan base. I get that. But I'm saying playing in a dome, like by it, I think that lessens the. I don't think it's. Advantage. I don't think it does. But I think so. You don't that you. I mean, it doesn't make like obviously playing in like Lambeau Field. That's the ultimate home field advantage because you're used to playing in the like cold Foxborough, weather. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it necessarily lessens the home field advantage. It doesn't give you more of an advantage. I think it, especially for like the Falcons, I think it lessens for sure. Like, because Drew Brees goes into. The Georgia Dome, I don't even know, Mercedes-Benz Superdome, and he's still slinging it, because he's in a dome. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess, but I think fan base has more to do with it. I don't know. As we can see from last week, I don't think home field is that big a deal. <laughs> as much as it used to be. Yeah. Because... For some teams. Some, so teams it, some teams it is a big deal. Like, I think for the Patriots, it's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Because they're just so so much better so, at home, and they're used to playing. And playing then, snowing. like another, like my Packers, that's a huge deal for them. Like they just play so much better at home. They're not a good road team. Fire McCarthy, dude. What? Fire a hot McCarthy, take. bro. It's a hot take. I've been wanting them to fire McCarthy for like three years now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting line, dude. I'm tired of it. Are you? Are you actually like done? Yes. That's crazy, dude. Do you think uh, Packers I thought fans things share the sentiment? I yes, I thought things were changing this year when he finally fired his coordinators or got new coordinators. But was he on the hot seat the year they won? Like before that? No. Okay. Because it was like, only Rogers' third year starting at that point, which is kind of crazy to think of how he won that quick championship and it's been purgatory ever since. It's rough. They're staple in the playoffs though. Are they gonna make the playoffs, Rich? I don't know. We'll see if they can run the table. <laughs> run the table with that tie. That's rough. I mean, hey, that still put them at. 
But like we said, eleven four and one. Like we said on Sunday, like when we were talking during the Patriots game, like that tie, it doesn't hurt you. Like it hurts you more than it helps you. I think. Do you know what I mean? Because at, if you're nine. What's most important is that win category, not the loss category. Yeah. So, it's taking away a win. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's taking away. Yes. Yeah. It's not going to help you by having less losses. Like, you might as well have an L, I guess. Unless yeah. it's like, you're nine, what would it be, nine, six, and one? Wait, nine, nine, five, and one? Right? Yeah. No. No. Nine, six, and one. Yeah, yeah, nine, six, and one. And then someone's eight, nine eight. and seven. Like, like you'd have to be, two. you'd have to be. They give the gap. If it's between a ten five and one team or a ten and six team, the ten five and one team will make it in. But yeah. but I feel like the odds of like I don't think they're gonna win ten games. Right, they'd have to win seven of the next eight. So. But they're done with the hardest part of their schedule. Yes. They can beat the they can beat the guys in their division. Yes. But would they? Losing to the Lions is rough, bro. That's, that's tough. Tough to bounce back from that. All right. So, let's do picks for this week. Again, this is on a Thursday. So, what, what is it going to be? You know how many games you got wrong last week? I don't, actually. Did I get them all right? I feel like I did. You missed two. And I missed one, two, three. I was six. I'm the pick god. So you went ten and two. I went six and six. So, Which ones did I miss? Uh, Cowboys and the Redskins Falcons. Hmm. Oh yeah, that Skins game was definitely yeah. what were you a thinking, weird dude? one. What were you thinking? I mean, I was just thinking, dude, the Falcons are so injured and the Redskins have been playing very well, but you know, it's the NFL. That and I was honestly, it is the NFL. I was honestly surprised. <laughs> I was surprised to see the Cowboys lose the way they did, too, to the Titans. Yeah, dude. Fire Jason Garrett. Yes. Please. I've actually been on that train since, like, last year, but... I've been on the train for a while, too. Like, he doesn't do... They had that I'm one. Clapping. They had that one good year when they were both rookies. I'm like, okay, maybe he's got some talent now. We'll see. I even thought that year, like, this isn't Jason Garrett. That's what I thought. Like, This is Zeke in that yeah, offensive this line. This is just them being... Yeah, they had, he has the best offensive line in the league. <laughs> Dak doesn't have to throw the ball. Yeah. That's what it was. Dude, when the, when the Packers beat them, that was crazy. That was run the table. Who did they lose to? The Falcons. The Falcons yeah. got railed. Oh, I remember. That's all coming back to me. Because we that got, was run the we table. We had Rodgers Brady. That's why I haven't given up hope yet, because I've seen them run the table. All I know, dude, I've seen relax. All I know, Tom Brady's waiting in the Super Bowl all the time. Where's Rodgers? Where's Rodgers? All I know is... Brady should just leave the Pats and then go rest for a couple of years. Hopefully Rodgers makes it to the Super Bowl, then he can sign with whatever team makes it to the Super Bowl, then they could play. It's like the two weeks before the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when the Bears had no quarterback and they were in the Super Bowl. Calls him up. Rex uh, Grossman. Uh, How Well he he won them that champ- NFC championship game. But Kyle Orton brought him the whole way. Yeah. I remember, dude, when, like, the Jay Cutler, Kyle Orton trade, I was like, dude, the Bears, man, they have a good quarterback. <laughs> New thought. Because he was good with the Broncos with Josh McDaniels. Yeah. Did you, have you heard about, like, interest of Josh McDaniels elsewhere? Mm-hmm. Like, he's thinking about it again. Because I feel like Bill Belichick. After securing wants, the bag. I feel like Bill Belichick won't stay around. Apparently, Josh McDaniels, it's between the top two guys I heard were McDaniels and Baker's coach from Oklahoma. Malik and Riley? Yeah. For the Pats? No, for the Browns. Oh, yeah. That's what I've heard. Yeah. But who knows? Who knows, man? All right. New week, you're up one. Okay? Got it. So, Skins Bucks. What do you think? Hold on, give me a second to pull this up real quick. I mean, I have them right in front, unless you're doing research over there. No, I just want to like see it with my own eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Do your ears not work? 
All right. Skins, Bucks. Washington at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is a combobulated piece of garbage. Wow. But Fitzmagic is playing. Four TDs, two interceptions last week. Interesting. Washington. This is a tough pick for me, actually. Yeah, I wrote I, mine down, so it's it's in stone. I think I'm going to still go with Washington. They've shown more upside than they have downside this season. Yeah. A little more of a consistent team, and I think they'll bounce back from that loss they had. I agree. I agree. I'm going with Redskins. Next one, easy, Cardinals, Chiefs. I'm going to have to go with the Chiefs on this you one. You think, dude? Yeah, definitely the Chiefs. The Cardinals literally suck. <laughs> they, just, they just they suck. suck. They just suck, bro. I, this one I might take the lead on. Bills Jets. It's too like too bad. And teams Darnold's not out. playing. No Darnold. Going with the Jets. Who's the backup quarterback for the Jets? I don't know. I'm gonna search this real fast before I make my decision. I don't know, dude. But I'm going with the Jets. I'm gonna search this. No Darnold, no decision. problem. For the loan, going with the Jets. I think they're gonna win. Oh, Josh McCown. Oh, definitely. Bro. Taking the Jets. Yeah, dude. Please. He was like Fitzmagic last Let's year. Let's go. Yeah, I'm taking the New York Jets here. Buffalo is hot I garbage. Th- okay, I actually thought McCown should have been playing from the beginning of the year. Yeah. Like to let, Darnold. To let Darnold waiting. shelf him for a bit. But. Dude, I'm I'm all about throwing the guy in the fire. Yeah. But I also thought like he kind of earned the spot last year because he played well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're both going for Jets. Um, next game you can start since I did the last one. Jags Colts. Interesting. A little divisional. I'm gonna take actually. Indianapolis. Are you, dude? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I'm actually going with the Jags, Daddy. I feel like they gotta bounce back the Jags. If they're gonna make the playoffs, now's the time to coming kick off a of bye week, right? Jags. Yes. No, they lost yes. to the Eagles. That was two weeks ago. The bye was two weeks ago. They didn't play last week because their defense had a bye. Right. Yeah. So that was two weeks ago. When they lasted. Oh, I thought you meant their bye was two weeks ago. No. no. Okay. Yeah. So they came come off a bye, dude. They've been preparing for Andrew Luck all week. Mm-hmm. Just who's their starting quarterback? I don't even know. Not Bortles, right? Is he? Did no, he it is back Bortles. To him? It is Bortles. Who's who? He got benched, right? Who did they play instead? Uh, Cody Kessler. Yikes! Maybe it's a trade for uh, Deshaun Kaiser. <laughs> Maybe it's a trade for a uh, Teddy Teddy Bridgewater. Mm. They should have traded for him before he left the Jets. Maybe they tried, bro. Who knows? Maybe they did, but I doubt it because they paid Blake Bortles some fat cash. He's with the Saints, right? Teddy Bridgewater. I bet he's a lot quarterback of the future. He's their quarterback of the future. Like, yes. I get that's what they're trying to do, but they don't sleep on Teddy. I will. I will snooze on Teddy, dude. I'm. I'm hearing the alarm and I'm snoozing. I'm hitting snooze, I'm going back to sleep. I'm hearing the alarm and I'm jumping out of bed and making myself some eggs because I hate eggs, dude. Hate not surprising. You don't like anything good in life. That's not true at all. <laughs> Stop trying to spread that propaganda, dude. <laughs> anyway. Jacksonville's coming off four straight L's. Alright, I'm starting this one. Lions Bears. Are they in Chicago? They're in Chicago. I'm not even, this isn't even gonna be hard for me. <sighs> I'm just thinking, bro. I'm thinking. Did the Bears win last week? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. Bears did win last week. They did. Who did they play? The Bills? Yep. Had a good outing. Crushed the Bills because the Bills are trash. They are trash. That's why I picked the Jets. Dude, I don't know. I think the Lions. I'm going to pick the Lions because I want this division to get even more interesting. Go on, Lions. I mean, I th- I don't think the game's going to be a blowout. I think it'll be close. That's, you know, division games are always... They're all, they're always games. competitive. Like the Bills always play the Patriots close. But that heads. Chicago defense is for real. They are for real. And for real. Tr- so far, Trubisky hasn't lost in the game. So uh, I thought they lost them. Um... I don't think he's necessarily lost them a game. I mean, the Packers game, he didn't help them. <laughs> but he didn't lose it either. 
I can't throw. I'm trying to, dude. I think he he throw picks. I'm not not that he throw a pick, but I think he threw like a bad incompletion one week, like a bad, right, he had, like a really bad. I don't series think that week. loses you a game. I don't think it was a Packers game though. I don't remember what game it was. Because I remember I was like, yikes. Probably that Dolphins game that they lost. Mm, I think that was it. But anyways, I'm going with Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, that's a safe pick. You coward. <laughs> that's also the winning pick. Okay. Um, so you start this one. Saints Bengals. Interesting matchup. Saints. Yeah, I'm going to say yeah. <laughs> Not even gonna. I think it's an interesting game. I'm excited like, to see. Hopefully, Des Bryant actually plays this week. Probably I don't know. Probably. I feel like play. honestly, he's not gonna have that big role on the team. I feel like honestly, his role's because like gonna start why... out small because obviously he hasn't played in two months, but then it's it's gonna grow as the season goes. I just really like the fact that he's paired with another elite receiver like. Thomas, because then it's just going to take attention away from him, where he's always been yeah, that gonna, spotlight. It's just going to open him up. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Um, ba, 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 ba. All right, I'm going to start this one. Pat, Pats, Titans. I'm going with Pats. I'm taking the Pats. Yep. We all know what Belichick Mike Mike Rabel versus Billy. So they were, like, asking Billy him. Billy like, versus his assistants. Was he? Well, yeah, he was an assistant coach to Pats. But I think this is the first player coach he's ever, like, faced. Yeah. And they were, like, asking him about it. And he's like, next week we're playing the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> or preparing for the classic Tennessee Titans. Classic Billiam. I'm just like, dude, just, ant- why are you like this? That's classic Billiam. <laughs> I love it, though. And they had, like, a, he, he was mic'd up last week. And it showed, he's just, like, sitting there with, like, his, like, thing. And he's, they had the audio of the game playing. And it's like, 10-5, touchdown. Just him. <laughs> just straight face, bro. The only time I saw him, like, show any emotion was when Rodgers threw an incompletion because the rush, like, the pocket was tight. And he goes to the line. He's like, that's what we want all night. Like, he was so excited. Yeah. Trey, I love it. And I'm like, he loves something. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. <laughs> like, he, he only shows emotion like that to the defense. Like, Tom and, like, he lets Tom Brady and, like, Josh McDaniels do their own thing. Right. That's, like, what's so good about this dynamic is, like, he just oversees everything mm-hmm. and he just delegates. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he's, like, and the, the defense is, like, his first look. So, enough with the Bill Belichick crush talk. Okay. Next, this is you, Falcons Browns. I'm taking the Browns. Are you? They're at home. <sighs> this Atlanta team had a good outing oh, last week, know. but... Cleveland's not getting blown out in these losses. I know, I know, I know. I'm thinking, bro. Initially, I thought Browns, but then you said Browns, and I'm like, I think I can pick one up here, you know? I'm thinking strategically. Uh, I'm just thinking I like the Browns' young defense. I like. I think their running backs are going to pop off. <laughs> like the Browns? Chubb, yeah. yeah. Like Chubb and Duke Johnson. I think they're going to pop. Against this ravaged Atlanta defense, <laughs> to say the least. And the Browns, their defense, not a bunch of suckers, you know? Like, no, they're just young. You convinced me, bro. They're Browns. young dogs. Browns. The Browns defense is full of young dogs. The heart of that defense is Jabril Peppers. <laughs> we'll go with it. Okay. You started this one, right? So this is me. Chargers, Raiders. Chargers. <laughs> not even a question, bro. I'm going to have to go with the Chargers here, just a gut feeling. Just a gut feeling, dude. You thought the you thought Alabama was do you think Alabama I think the they'll Chargers? Lay the, I think they'll lay the smack down on the retirement home team that is Oakland. <laughs> in Oakland Park. <laughs> Oakwood. No, just like Oakland. Like yeah. separated. Shady Oakland. <laughs> Alright, uh uh-huh. This is you. Seahawks Rams. Rams. Yeah, I agree. They're in LA. They already beat Seattle in Seattle. Yeah, but that's... Coming that's off a loss, is, that's they're motivated. Is, yeah. Being in season in Seattle is different than now Seattle. Uh, back then, we were talking about they were decrepit old men that they couldn't do. They still kind of are, yeah, but, but they're still They're putting it now. together, yeah. All right, so this one's me. Dolphins, Packers. Dolphins. Interesting. At home. Green Bay's at home. I know. I know. This is... The, Mike McCarthy can take five. You know, who, you know who's starting the Miami game. I don't care, dude. Osweiler. I hope it's Osweiler, dude. It is Osweiler. He's slinging the ball, dude. 
That Miami team did beat the Bears. I know, that's why I picked them. But. And McCarthy's getting fired next week. I'm not going against my Packers. Sadly, I don't think McCarthy's getting fired in the middle of the season. Well, he will next week. But. <laughs> if they lose the Dolphins, maybe. That's but they're I'm not going to lose, so he's not going to get fired. I'm going with Packers. That's not even a question. Dolphins. Just be ready for it, dude. Just mentally prepare yourself. I don't work on Sunday, so we're about to be watching these games. I do work Sunday. 2.30 to 11. So I'm missing okay. it. So, this one's you. Cowboys-Eagles. Uh-huh. I'm classic. taking the Eagles. Yeah. I'm taking the Eagles in this home. one. I've just watched how bad Dak played Yeah. on Monday night. Dude, the Eagles did not play well. I'm going to the Eagles. And you're going up against a better defense than the Eagles? Yeah. The Titans defense. No, they're not. Joking. If I'm the Cowboys, I'm just... What are you doing with Zeke? Lame. He had six touches in the second half. Yeah, for, like... And Jason Garrett's supposed to be this, like, offensive mastermind. Like, not even a mastermind. He's just supposed to be an offensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. You have one of the best backs in the league. And you're not using him. Potentially. It. You're not using him. No, he is. And you're not using him. And you're giving him six touches, bro. It's ridiculous. Just do the, the re- like... Why don't you just give him away? If you don't want him, yeah, give him the Packers, take bro. Him. No, I don't want him, but... You don't want Zeke. No. Shut up, dude. Stop. I like Aaron Jones. I, I get that. Aaron Jones catches the post. most yards per carry in the league. Okay. Give him the ball. I just don't think you understand how Saint Pesos work. <laughs> That's, I'm going to be honest. I mean, I've just seen it for two years in a row now, so. Was, the last year was even a smaller sample size. Right, but. Is there. No, just stop. Give him the ball. Uh, yeah, give him the ball. Let's what he's he done do. has earned him the ball. I mean, they did trade away Ty Montgomery. Give they, him the ball. Mainly to give him the ball. Was last week his, the most touch he's had? Yeah, and it was like 14. That's terrible. I feel like he hit 16 one week. I might be like... I'm pretty sure last week was his highest, but... And then he fumbled, dude. Maybe he did have like 16 touches, including receptions, but like ca- straight carries. We know how Mike McCarthy feels 16. about fumbles. Jamal... Come in here. <laughs> I like how Jamal Williams runs, though. Don't I hate honest. that he has to fight for every yard. I love Whereas it, it comes so easy for Aaron Jones. Like... Aaron Jones, 10 yards upfield before he gets uh, touched. Last game. The Poop Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Giants 49ers. The Poop Bowl. <laughs> Heard it here first. <laughs> the Poop Bowl. <laughs> I'm going with San Francisco. Dude, I'm going to go with the Giants then. Giants have more talent, but... That's what I'm saying, like... I want to see this quarterback play for... The... What's his name? I don't even know his name. I don't even know his name either. <laughs> I just want to see this quarter... Nate, quarter... Nate Mullen. Nate, yeah, oh yeah, he popped off last week against the Raiders. Okay, but... But it's the Giants. The Giants' defense is much better. I'm literally giving the edge because they have Saquon. Saquon I was Odell. going. I was thinking about that too. Just not even Odell. Saquon. But then I thought, who's who's giving them the ball? Oh yeah, they're, they're gonna they're gonna pitch the ball to Saquon. And Eli, throw it to him. Eli, that corpse. He's like that skeleton sitting in the chair in SpongeBob. <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally just invented chocolate. Sweet, sweet chocolate. I always hated it. <laughs> All right, those are picks. I think I have this one in the bag. The Dolphins pick, I might. We might tie, actually. Can we tie? Yeah. I think we had an even number of. No, we disagreed on three, so. No. Some more Wait, time. no, we disagreed on four. Yeah. Because last I was going to say, I thought we had an even number. So we could tie. Who knows? Alright, so to wrap it up, I kind of want to talk some MMA. You know? I, this is the most I've ever had written down for MMA. So. The Floyd fight. That was going to be... Already called something. off. Already called off. I called it. Yeah. Did we even talk about the pod last week? I don't think, it's been I don't think we had enough time. Yeah. So It came out announced. right after we did the pod, like that Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah. The fight's announced. And I, I say... I think I told you. I told people. This fight's not happening. Yeah, you did. <laughs> He's not fighting in Japan in MMA. So, apparently, like, something was wrong. It was supposed to be an exhibition... And then they talked about it like it wasn't. It was supposed to be like three nine-minute rounds, like three five-minute rounds or something like that. 
And then Floyd basically was like, I didn't even agree to anything. Dude, you're in Japan in a photo shoot with the dude. So it was weird. It was going to happen. I think Connor calling him out like had something to do with it. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyway, Floyd fight canceled. Not surprised. Not surprised at that. Another thing that's not surprising, DC wrecked Derek Lewis. There's levels to this. There's levels to this, as Stonewall says. I was honestly so surprised... That he handled him? At how he handled him. Like, I, I expected DC to win. I didn't expect him to win like that. I thought Derek Lewis would put up more of a fight. So... After, Maybe catch him with a couple blows. After the fight, DC was like, dude, he hit so hard. <laughs> like... He was like, I needed to put him, I needed to get get him out because he hit so hard. He's like, other Stipe hit hard, like John Jones hit hard, he knocked me out. But he hit so hard, he's like, I've never felt any, like you can train for it all you want, but until you end there with someone like that, like, that's a killer. Who knows, maybe one more shot. Maybe, dude. Because he took, he took one, like he got a big, good one too, in, And then Derek Lewis was throwing switch kicks. Like he's... When, like, when he first had Derek was up against the cage, you're like, bro, if he ragdolls, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> he did ragdoll He just bodied him, bro. He's, this dude has to cut weight to get to 265, and he just ragdolls him. And DC looks so fat. He looks <laughs> so fat. Funny. But hey, dude, if, he, if he's eating Popeyes and you know doing his thing and making weight and beating him like that, so be it. Oh, so I kind of want to talk about this uh, you, the UFC 232 card. I'm going to read it to you. If I still have it up. Yep. So, let's start. BJ Penn is on this card. You know who BJ Penn no. is? Pioneer of MMA. Like, okay. in 2009, one of the biggest names. The super fight to make was him versus GSP. Big deal. Like, the fact that he's fighting on this card is a big deal. And then Andre Orlovsky used to be the heavyweight champion. Walt Harris, he's a good guy. I mean, this is going to be a good fight. But then this is where it starts to get good. Chad Mendez is fighting this dude. I don't care who it is, but it's Chad Mendez, and he's probably on roids. So he's about to knock <laughs> this dude out. And then Carlos Condit versus Michael Chiesa. You know who Carlos Condit is? So he was the interim champion when GSP first got hurt. Okay. And then he fought GSP. They had a really good fight. His nickname's the Natural, natural Born Killer. Sounds, sounds cheesy. And then Chris Cyborg and Amanda Nunes. That's the best women's time. fight ever. Yes. It's going to be nuts. I don't know what's going to I don't know what's going to happen. This well, Amanda is the best. Nunes looks unstoppable. but And so does Chris Cyborg. That's what I'm saying. And Amanda Nunes has extra weight. So she doesn't have. She, I don't know how much. She probably doesn't have to cut as much. Extra power. We know what happens with, D, with DC. Granted, DC. It's 45 extra pounds. <laughs> but traditionally, more pe- people have more pop when they don't have to cut as much weight. Right. So we'll see. It's then the main dream. event, John Jones, Alexander Gustafson. This is one, like the first time they fought, was one of the best fights ever. Period. So I thought John Jones lost that fight, actually, on the scorecards. But he ended up winning. So, December 29th. Mark your calendar, Roach, because we're watching. My calendar is marked. Mark it, okay. And then, so I just read this before we started. Brock versus DC in jeopardy. Because Brock just signed a new deal with the WWE. Wow. So, they might not work it out. And then after the fight, DC's like, bring your WWE championship. I want to be a WWE champion too. Come on, bro. I think that shows he's not. This might not happen. But this is the last, like DC said, this is the last fight he wants to fight in his career. Is it just Brock Lesnar? As Brock Lesnar. He wants to have that payday. Wait, I can't believe they're even thinking about him fighting for the title, bro. It's so stupid. Brock Lesnar fighting for the title? Yes. The last time he fought, he was juiced to the gills. <laughs> juiced to the gills. Ragdolling Mark Hunt. And then Stipe. Has, everyone agrees he's the best heavyweight champion of all time. And he didn't get his rematch right away, which people were kind of mad about. I wasn't that mad about it because, I don't know, Derek Lewis was hot. You know what I mean? He has strike on the iron top. Right. But then Stipe is like, he knows, like, that should be the next fight. 
theoretically, like, traditionally, but Brock Lesnar technically hasn't fought in, like, seven years <laughs> because that fight didn't happen, you know? There was a no contest. Yeah. So then he's going to fight for the title? Like, he's not GSP, you know? What do you think about Brock? Honestly, I'd say let DC fight for the WWE Championship. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's already turned the into champ, champ, champ. The champ, champ, imagine universal it. champ. You can't imagine it. I can't, dude. Champion of the universe, whatever that means. Thanos. Thanos. Um, and then so then he said how he wants this Brock Lesnar. It's three of the seven fight. championship stones. <laughs> the, but then he said in that interview on Monday, he doesn't need the John Jones fight anymore. Like he's coped with it. He doesn't need to fight him again. Which I'm just like, just fight him at heavyweight. You know what I mean? Like, fight him in fight him in your dome. You don't need to fight him again, or you don't want to fight him again. Dude, I don't know how he used to talk. He was like, "I need this Jones fight. Like, my last fight ever is gonna be a two of five with John Jones." I think he's real. Like, I just think he loves not cutting weight, and he doesn't want to fight John Jones at heavyweight because that's too much an advantage. I think. Right. Because. What would John Jones be like? Two twenty five. He was supposed to fight Stipe. Did you know that? Mm-mm. Like uh, before he popped, they were setting because he called out Brock Lesnar after he knocked out uh, DC, and he's they were setting up Stipe and John Jones. Stipe would have destroyed him, but anyway, do you think he would destroy him? John Jones, Stipe. Who are you picking? If John Jones still Gun to your head, who you pick? John Jones still roided up the way he was. <laughs> might take John Jones. Dude, think about that juiced up leg, shin bone to the <clears> head. <throat> I'm taking John. I'm taking his leg. Whoa, it's going down outside. I'm taking John. I'm taking John as well. And then the last thing from MMA news, Ben Askren versus Robbie Lawler is what it's looking like it's setting up. The one guy he didn't call out. What do you think about that? I just think Ben Astrid's gonna run some cheeks. You, you're living up. You're believing the hype. I'm believing your hype. I'm believing my hype as well. Because Robbie Lawler on the decline. Yep. I feel like that's kind of easy pickings though. Like give him like a top guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like top three. But the problem is Try, trying to ingratiate him with the UFC. The problem is if he wins against a top five guy, theoretically he'd be next in line for a title shot, right? His best friend is Tyron Woodley. <laughs> and he said he's not going to fight him. Yeah. So, like, what's the point of even... Like, that's why DC cut the 205, because he didn't want to fight Kane Velasco as a mm-hmm. heavyweight. So I'm just thinking, like, what's the point of all... Like, why are you doing this? <laughs> is basically my thought process, but who knows. All right. So I think that wraps up for today. What about you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that pretty much covered everything we wanted to cover today. We're sitting at hour 27. That's the pretty lengthy. Pot ever. That's lengthy. That is lengthy. I didn't even feel like we talked that long. I, I was either. like, I looked at my notes and I'm like, I don't know if we can get to an hour. I know. It didn't look like we had t- that much there. Talk about the NBA for a while, though. Let me talk about the NFL for a while. Kind of trickled into this one. And then this one kind of trickled into one. Yeah. Anyway, who are you shouting out, buddy? Well, I was going to shout out Tyson Chandler. Tyson Chandler? For buying out this, you know. Reaching that buyout with the Suns. Yeah, but now, sure. based on the info I learned when we talked NBA, I might have to shout out James Jones. James Jones. For making it possible. I love it. So we actually don't have the same shout out. My shout out is, I don't let me know. Tenshin Nasukawa. That's who Floyd was supposed to fight. Look at his highlight reel after this, buddy. He's a killer. And he's only like 20. I want Tenshin Natsukama versus the Korean Superboy, Duho Choi. Dude, I don't think Duho Choi wants that smoke. I want to see some Korean Superboy. It's such a weird situation, that Floyd thing. Anyway. But it's not surprising. I'm d- disappointed, but not surprised. So that wraps up for this edition of Untitled with Stonewall and Roach. Lorenzo. <laughs> Lorenzo? You. Oh, sorry. Lorenzo to the viewers. To the viewers. But Roach. Can you not call me Roach? There's a story you- to that. Can you not call me that? So we're going to tell the story. Should we tell the story? You can tell the story. I'm not okay. good at telling stories. This girl I was kind of talking to um, was over. And we're to, I'm talking to Lorenzo. Roach. To you me. can call me Roach. The viewers can to call me Roach. To the viewers. 
You know, not in person. I feel like we're close enough. Yeah. If you right. want, go for it. So then she says something like "Hey Roach" or something like, and then says a sentence, and then can Roach, you give me my phone. That's what it was. Oh yeah, Lorenzo's was like, "Can you not call me that?" In the like, just most annoying voice box. I don't even know Roach that much at this point. Like, yeah, this we... is only like a week in. Mm-hmm. Not even. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what is Savage? Can you not call me that? Can you I not like when you, call me that? I feel like you should call me Lorenzo. I don't really like when girls call me Roach. How sexist. You swine. Unreal. What so, can I say? Breaking news on Untitled. Man, just, dude, are you flexing in the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it for episode seven of Untitled. Catch us next week, SoundCloud, iTunes, working on Spotify, YouTube. Roach is still looking at himself in the mirror. Dude, I love this. He is so uh, narcissistic, it blows my mind. All right, we'll catch you next week. Good job today, Roach. I try.